I'm Felix Yain, DJ and producer. Hi, I'm Franz Zimmer, a.k.a. Alafaben. I'm a DJ and I write and produce music, mostly with other artists. So, how do you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Paul, and I make music. I make music. Electronic music brings together people from completely different cultural backgrounds. It doesn't matter which god you believe in, which religion you follow, or which passport you have. It's about people coming together and celebrating the music. Front, they are Germany's number one hit export. Twenty years ago, nobody could have imagined there'd be DJ festivals on this scale or so many of them. Their shows are attended by tens of thousands of fans all over the world. In the last three years, we've traveled from Australia via India, all over South America, the US several times and all of Europe, and also South Africa and Indonesia. And they are just the tip of the phenomenon. There used to be 100 new records a week. Today there are probably 10,000 tracks a week. Today you can download some software and start putting down beats, and if you're good, you'll make it. German DJs are in big demand at home and abroad. We now have an established house and club scene in Germany, and that's also somehow part of our culture. The German scene is out there. I started DJing at birthday parties in my teens. At first, I just plugged my cell phone into the sound system. I thought, now I want to decide what music gets played. I always wanted to be the party host and guide the people through the evening. That's how my DJing ultimately developed. I started playing my first club gigs in northern Germany at the age of 15 or 16. And after graduating from high school when I was 17, I really focused on it 100%. This is basically all I take on stage. My headphones, it even says Felix's headphones, and two memory sticks. And then I always have a spare pair of phones with me, which is in the suitcase. So if a piece of luggage gets lost, I still have another set of phones and sticks. So theoretically, all I need to perform is my suitcase or even my backpack. Felix 
Phoenix Yin belongs to a new generation of musicians. Equipped with just a memory flash drive, this evening he's once again playing on the main stage of a major festival. Two years ago, an unthinkable prospect for someone from a small village on the North German Baltic Sea coast. I became known through my remixes. You take an existing song and reinvent it. It's like putting a new dress on the composition. You pack a new beat underneath, new instruments, so you almost make a new song out of the same song. Lo and behold, in 2015, Yin's remix of Cheerleader by Jamaican singer Omi was so popular that it unexpectedly went to the top of the charts in 55 countries. It had been a hit in Jamaica, I think, but nobody in the rest of the world knew it. And when I put out my remix, it went nowhere for the first six months. But people started to pick up on it. It went to number one on Spotify in Sweden, with no marketing or record label. People just thought, I like that, and loaded it into their playlist, sent it to their friends, posted it on Facebook, and that's how it gradually took off. It was streamed 700 million times on Spotify and a billion on YouTube. Everything okay? Felix Yin is now a brand. There are so many things I have to deal with. Sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't relax a bit and stop over-engineering things. <laughs> Come on, I'll do something to make it look interesting. Last minute to press. Do you know the new song, Feel Good? No. That's it. Okay. We're going to do pyros on both the first and second drop. Like, this is the track we want to highlight the most. It's new people who are successful today because of the Internet. We have become much younger. Everyone is in their early 20s, and it's thanks to the Internet that we can upload our music, market ourselves through our own efforts, share our music with people, and basically good music wins out. No matter how big or small, I'm always excited before every show. And today I'm in Latvia, where I've never played before. Cheat codes are tearing the place up right now. We have 15 minutes for the changeover. I'm in the closing set, which means everyone who doesn't want to see me can go home. Those are all the thoughts that go through your mind beforehand. Plus, I hope there will be no major incidents, an ambulance just rolled by, and that I have a great crowd. Wicked!
For a headliner appearance like this, top DJs like Felix Yen earn up to six-figure fees. Today's set lasts 75 minutes. Yen plays a mix of chart music, hip-hop beats, and his own tracks. The key is reading the crowd and building up the groove to the climax, or drop. They're singing the lyrics to the songs. They're in a good mood and can forget everyday life. It's just a nice moment you can share with them. The moment you go on stage and there are 5,000 people in front of you, you don't really grasp what's going on. You're in the moment. It's like a dream sequence. People are just grateful that this music exists, and they just let themselves go with it, with every single phase or sequence in the music, and that's a very intense feeling. Das ist schon ein sehr, sehr intensives Gefühl. Contact with the fans is really important to me. I'm also an intensive user of social media. I do all the posts myself, and I now respond on Instagram. We have a hashtag called first 4 felix where I answer the first four comments under each photo. It's really important to give some time and love back to the fans who make such an effort to follow me around the world. But music always comes first. And the main thing about most successful DJs and producers is their own singles and their production. And that makes you just as much a musician, songwriter and producer. That's where the art is. That's how the album starts. When me and the other guys started out, the music didn't even exist. We had an idea of the sound we wanted to listen to and had to create it ourselves.
I've just made the bass notes longer, but that really affects the whole thing in terms of compression and then individually in relation to the kick drum and so on. Well, that's a bit of geek talk. Music has always had this meaning for me. Maybe because I grew up with my Stern radio set in East Germany and always listened to West Berlin stations. That was my only connection to the outside world. I used to sit by the window and look out to the left, and there was West Berlin. And I thought, that's where all the cool music comes from. And at some point, it all worked out. <laughs> Paul Van Dyke has been making music for over a quarter of a century and has had a defining influence on the evolution of the trance genre. He's been voted best DJ in the world multiple times and still racks up more air miles a year than most professional pilots. But in February 2016, that glittering career almost came to an abrupt and fatal end. I had a pretty bad accident. There was this stage construction, and it was covered with black fabric. But it wasn't very robust. I fell through it because the cloth couldn't hold my weight. And underneath the stage, there were these intertwined cables and structures. And so I plunged six meters down and got pretty damaged. I was bleeding in several places, and I have to say I was lucky that there was a specialized neurological clinic just 10 minutes away from the venue. If it had happened in Amsterdam and not in Utrecht, next to the UMC, I wouldn't be sitting here today. The damage to my brain was so massive that I doubt I'd be here now. I couldn't speak. I had to learn all the basic things again. And without the strength of my wife at my side, without Margarita, I couldn't have done that either. If I hadn't had her as a reason to cling to life, I would have given up. It was bad. But I concentrate on the positive, because positive things give you more motivation. Not that I want my performances to be part of my treatment program. No way. But it was very important for me to have a goal. For example, I'd like to be back on stage in such and such a day, like a deadline. What I went through also found its way into my music. It's reflected in my music, and that's what makes music authentic. At some point, I'll be playing this piece of music in front of people, and if I'm not convinced that I've done everything I can to make it as good as I can, then it just won't work.
When it comes to his music and performances, Paul Van Dyke is a meticulous perfectionist. Fellow German DJ Markus Schulz's overrun is annoying. Plus, there's an incompleted technical setup shortly before Van Dyke is due on stage. Ready your senses. This is Paul Van Dyke. The show is a multimedia trance performance, a work of art. Layer by layer, Van Dyke uses sequencers and MIDI controllers to break down tracks into their constituent parts before reassembling them live at the controls. That means each set not only sounds different, but above all, it sounds just like Paul Van Dyke wants it to sound. I think one of the reasons why I'm still here is because I am pretty authentic. I stay true to the kind of music that I actually believe in. I refuse to sell out or be a vehicle for trends. There have been two or three productions in my career where I've listened to a manager, where I moved away a bit from my own clear direction, try it this way or that way. And to be honest, these are the two or three tracks I never even play myself. His music like transports you into a different world and just like amazing. Like his drops come back with more energy yeah. than before, and then you keep going, and it's just nonstop. Yeah, I know, it's just great. I love you. Thank you. Trans fam for life. It's f***ing, it has soul. For a long time, what made the electronic music scene different was that it wasn't an industry as such, although the scene did have professional elements. But since then, it has become an industry. What you see in the top 40 charts, for example, are ultimately products of the music industry. The whole DJ thing has emerged from the underground, because DJs are also producing and putting out their own music. It's a different artistic role and a different market. In the end, of course, it's a product that you want to get to the public to sell. If you don't make or release good music, then you can do whatever you want. But of course, it's also about building up a brand. Some producer takes on some pop star. I call it an audible marketing plan. That's exactly what it is. There's a lot of hard work involved, and only a few make it. Ladies, 
Of course, when you have had a hit, the pressure is on for you to have another one, and you have a record company on your back, and a whole team, and your own ego. Once you've had a number one, of course you want another one. To say you're addicted sounds negative, but sure, it's a motivation. At the same time, of course, there are more and more business aspects creeping in. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had to fight for success. At first I went to radio stations and college radio or to magazines with a circulation of, let's say, around a thousand. I visited them all and sent every fan a personal reply. I can't do that now. I do electronic dance music, but I get a lot of influences from different directions, from pop, from rock. I even used to play a country-influenced song. I work with other artists because I can't sing, and I'm not a good instrumentalist. Berlin native Franz Zimmer has taken his summary beats, pop melodies, and live performances to the top of the charts. But to do that, he had to shelve his dream of studying art and give up his job as a pastry chef. Today, as Alle Farben, he spends every summer on tour, sometimes playing three shows in 24 hours. Success means sacrificing privacy. It's gotten to the point where I say that my life now takes place on the road. I used to say my life is separate from touring, and touring is work. Back then I wasn't yet on the road five or six days a week. Now my life and work are far more the same thing. I try to work out as often as I can. Whenever I'm home for two days, the first thing I do is go to the gym. At the start of my career, I didn't know how much I could work and was getting a bit tired. So I just said, okay, I have to change things. I don't drink as much alcohol anymore, I eat healthier, I do sports. And since I've been doing this, I can work for two months at a time without a break and still come up smiling. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> My typical festival day is get up in the morning, usually around 11, then have breakfast if there's time, then to the airport, if I'm not already sleeping at the airport hotel, and then we fly to XYZ. In most cases, we still have to drive from the airport to the venue. The shows are usually in the early evening. Then I go back to my hotel, and it starts all over again the next day. So I see a lot of airports, a lot of hotel rooms, and a lot of backstage areas. 
With this kind of schedule, a 30-minute meal break becomes a luxury. And five minutes of privacy, even more so. You have five shows in a row. You always take hotel room, whatever. They all look the same. And then you wake up and think like, okay, where am I now? I've even had to look at the hotel brochure to find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every day is different. I don't sleep regular hours. And then, of course, you miss a lot of time with your family and friends. A lot of birthdays, weddings, graduation parties, all the celebrations that fall on weekends when we DJs are on tour. If you're passionate about what you're doing, it no longer feels like a job. Then you don't feel like you're worn out. You just have that energy, and that's another motivation too. Perukaville was pretty special. I was really happy because I knew it was going to be the biggest gig of the year. That's to say, from the stage size alone and also from the live musicians on it. And then the skies opened and I stood there thinking, oh God, what's going to happen now? I've played in far worse places. I've stood and played up to my ankles in water because it was raining so hard. For Ale Faben, it'll be the most eventful show of his career so far. And not just because 10,000 people are waiting for him in the constant downpour. We were all like, okay, it's pouring down, but the people are still there. It'll still be a great show. And then behind me, the power failed. My microphone and all my equipment at the back were out, but the mics for the singers and the trumpet were still working. He turns and looks at me like, are you kidding me? The music's gone. And I just look at him and call out, yes, the music's gone. Everything's gone. All right. You guys, there's some technical problem. 
Anique was on stage, and it was like we had rehearsed it. Graham did beatbox to keep the rhythm going, and Leonard played trumpet. That meant we were in the game and did a performance for 10 minutes. They got the system back up for the last song. We had exactly six minutes, played one song, and then it was over. But it was amazing. That was awesome. Next time we, we do straight yeah, cut yeah, off. Yeah, 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 we, we cut off in the middle of the set and we do like a acoustic set. It's better. <laughs> It's so awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, bro. Thank you. So, let's keep the show together. Like, wow. I don't consider myself purely as a DJ on stage because I can also see how much more there is behind it. Going on stage with musicians, it's always different when you have live music. It lives more, and that's what creates that special moment, that energy at a gig. Diese, diese Energie aus bei einem Gig. EDM, electronic dance music, is as popular as ever. And DJs from Germany are at the forefront. But how long will the boom last? Will it get even bigger and more bombastic? Or is the next new big thing in the music world emerging from the internet? Classic EDM pop is already in decline. So we'll see how many people get washed up on this pop wave, how much substance there really is, and whether an artist will go on to have a career or if they were really just a flash in the pan. I can't hear you. Electronic and house music will always be around. It's too firmly anchored in our culture. And of course, people's tastes and the zeitgeist and trends are changing. And I don't know if my genre and EDM as a whole, this bubble, if it will keep on growing and growing. And the festivals will get bigger and bigger, and the radio stations will still be into it. The 
I always say, when your career is over, it's over. I'm happy with what I do. If everyone ends up just doing hip-hop, I'll say, fine, count me out. But somehow I always manage to keep my finger on the pulse and have success with my singles. That's why I'm not worried at all right now. Personally, I'll just have to wait and see. Right now I'm just incredibly happy and grateful. But I'm also aware that it's a very fast and intense lifestyle. And maybe in five or ten years, I'll cut down on touring a bit. And spend more time in the studio, promoting young artists, getting into songwriting. Maybe concentrate on production, or perhaps work in the music industry as a record company or in management. I still have all these avenues open, and I still have a lot of time. Weit geöffnet für mich und ich habe noch eine Menge Zeit. Musik